Jane's addiction helped bring alternative rock to the masses in the early 90s. Despite their influence on rock and roll, their time together would be short-lived during their first run. Egos and drugs cannibalized the band, and in its ashes, porno for pyros would be born. Today, I want to talk about a story I'm sure many of you have never heard, and it involves federal agents from the US government and local authorities holding the band in custody over counterfeit money. Porno for Pyros would sprout up in 1992 as frontman Perry Farrell wasn't going to wait for Jane's addiction to reform. The frontman would come up with the name after seeing an ad for fireworks in an adult magazine. Farrell would enlist guitarist Peter DiStefano and bass player Martin Lenoble, as well as his old Jane's Addiction bandmate drummer Stephen Perkins. The band's demos would be heard by Warner Brothers who signed the band, and following the signing the band would cut a dozen or so songs. He would tell Spin Magazine in August of 1992, It will not be like Jane's Addiction. The main thing is to love the people you hang out with, whether you're sleeping with them, making music with them, or doing business with them. When asked whether he misses Jane's Addiction in the same interview, he would reply, Ah, uh, no, I don't even want to hear the name, it's over. By 1993, the band would release their self-titled debut record and would tour behind the album. As part of the tour, frontman Perry Farrell would hand out thousands of fake $100 bills with his face on the money, to members of the audience during the band's performance of the song Miha. The band probably had no idea that they could land themselves in hot water with the federal government. Counterfeiting money is a serious federal crime and can land someone in jail for 15 years along with a several thousand dollar fine. That's just the crime for printing fake money. Actually circulating it carries a separate but similar penalty. The United States government was no stranger to counterfeit money. Color photocopiers only helped proliferate the rise of counterfeit cash floating around America and the world. And up until 1993, the biggest seizure of counterfeit cash happened in 1989 when the federal government uncovered a counterfeit operation that was done through a single laser copier in Arizona. After one porno for pyro show in Tampa Bay, a ballsy fan who took home some of the fake money tried to use one of the $100 bills for a local Denny's restaurant to pay for his meal. According to the Tampa Tribune, the fake money was accepted at the restaurant, but it appears that possibly the store manager quickly realized that they had been duped, according to Spin Magazine. The bill that was used to pay for the meal bore little to no resemblance to a real $100 bill. It didn't feel like real money, didn't feature any of the security counterfeit protections, most strikingly, Benjamin Franklin's photo wasn't on the bill, instead being replaced by Perry Farrell's face. Creating novelty money has happened a lot, as you can find it in stores, and even on the TV show The Office, the federal and local authorities would end up visiting the Denny's restaurant and spoke to the manager. The band, for their part, was set to play a show in Miami after Tampa, but prior to the show, federal and local authorities raided the amphitheater, where the show was set to take place, and counted and seized the counterfeit cash. The band would be held in custody for several hours, and they would be released with no charges being filed. The band's manager put out a joking statement at the time that read, Perry is crushed, he had his own secret supply of porno money, and was hoping to dine out at Denny's for the next 10 years on it. Spin Magazine would report that for subsequent tour dates, frontman Perry Farrell would be handing out real cash as stage props. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and see you again on Rock and Roll Your Stories. Take care.